Want to know how you can automate your document workflow with Power Platform and agents that you build in Copilot Studio? Stay tuned because in this episode, Raghavan is going to share how we can achieve that. Let's get the show started. Welcome back to the Low Code Revolution show. My name is Eliza. I'm a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft. And today we have Raghavan, who's all the way from New Zealand, that is going to show how you can process documents either in a singular format or in a bulk format with some of the AI capabilities that we have today in Power Platform and in Copilot Studio. I'm now going to hand it over to Raghavan, who's going to introduce himself. Welcome to the show, Raghavan. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you for having me here. Um, hello, guys. Uh, I'm based in New Zealand, Auckland. I'm one of the business apps MVP. Um, today, my demo is all about, uh, you know, like how to use the AI builder for the construction industry, and then uh, how we can use this agents to, you know, automate the process. Let's jump back to my slides and showcase like a high level, what is the context, and then I can walk you through the demo like a high level, what are the things which you can do and apply to your industry, yeah? Let's jump back to my slides. The first thing is, uh, you know, like, uh, again, the whole idea is how do you actually, so we got the scenario, let me give a little bit of background. So we work in a con construction industry, which is an infrastructure delivery projects where we build bridges and then roads, state highways, et cetera, right? So, in some stages, in many of the, you know, like when we are really busy, we get like a heavy load permit, uh, you know, like a kind of uh, uh, permit from the government or from the council, respective council. So we receive in a bulk files, so which is really hard to process. And where, uh, where we have um, civil engineers where they can process manually and the, da and the data which, in, which, is, which resides within the file which is completely dynamic, meaning you can't predict some of the things like what is going to be in the file. Sometimes imagine if you got like uh, thousands of files or 300 files, which you need to process in one day, even with the human, which is really impossible. Even with like five engineers working at the same time to make that happen. So this is where the revolution comes into place. So um, the next thing is, Yeah, so I'm going to walk you through all the, you know, like how to use the A builder model and also how to use the agent to make that effective and how we are utilizing the data which to store that record and, uh, you know, response back to, you know, like uh, the engineers who is working on the project. So, which is really a good use case. Um, main thing is you can see uh, the complexity. So, which is the real good thing which we need to understand like what is the background here? So one of the good thing is you can see uh, at my screen currently uh, the places where I must, those are the confidential fields, but those are very important for us to you know process and make a decision. So when we are doing a retaining wall or maybe like a, some kind of clever decisions when we build a bridge or maybe like to make a temporary works. So this is really crucial for us because what is the weight the lorry the truck can carry at the same time and then you know like some of the crucial factors are included based on the decision of the data so at present it is really hard because it is laborious as i said and uh, one of the thing you can see uh, dynamic column structure which i mentioned here so this table which is an unpredictable meaning sometimes every permit is different it's based on one specific lat and long location and uh, imagine if you got like 300 file for a set for a length of a road so every file may contain like a 10 axles or maybe like a, you know five eight or two depends on how the you know assessment has been made on the particular place so we would like to extract the permit number and then um, what is the permit and who is the applicant so in this case Downer is one of the, you know, like a, a contractor and there are designers. So we need to extract all those information. And the main thing here, the exercise of 
why we are using agents. So you can see the axial number, which is the dynamic column, which is unpredictable. And we want all these values to make a decision, right? So this is where we are going to use some clever AI builder model and, uh, you know, pass it through agents. And we are going to see like how we can do single file as well as a bulk file processing, right? Um, yeah, again, so there are limitations. You can see like uh, currently it's a human error and there are like high resource required to make a decision. So we deploy graduates to do this job. At the same time, we are conscious about we want the clear output, right? Because sometimes the human error is going to make a bad decision. So we don't want to do that. So it should be completely accurate. No human error should be happen at any point of time, right? So um, there are, again, uh, I don't want to go deep dive with this. Uh, just a very quick thing. Uh, you can see uh, what is the impact. So basically, like, uh, there is a possibility of penalty if you do a wrong decision or, uh, you know, like, uh, the customer might not be really satisfied. In this case, the customer is government or a respective council, right? Because why you guys made this decision, we want, uh, you know, like a big bridge or maybe the wider bridge. So some kind of thing, right? Again, uh, so to do this, uh, the first thing is we need a AI builder model, which is actually, you know, doing some clever things. Now the AI builder model, it's extremely clever when I say now. So there are like after GPT is launched, there are so many things which has, you know, changed the whole world. And uh, the document extraction is now really simple. So you don't need to pre-train the model by, you know, like, uh, uploading a 15 of the same kind. So you don't need to do that. So I have applied some of the clever techniques to, you know, like uh, use the prompt builder and get the output without writing single line of code. So um, again, so um, as I mentioned, uh, there is a form processing, which is an existing pre-building model, and there is a code-free model. So this is again, uh, which is the prompting one, which I was highlighting. Um, so what we are going to do, so um, I made the prompt to make it really clever to understand that uh, the sample document which I was showing in, in my earlier slide. So I wanted to upload a one sample rather than doing multiple samples and then do the field mapping, get the output as a JSON and then pass it to Dataverse. So meaning for the business users, we are saving those records in database, right? So this is the clever idea. Again, uh, you can see that uh, the model training is actually happening on the fly without doing too much training, right? So you can do that instantly in a very quick span of time. And you can also do the testing and then you can validate by seeing the output. What is the output you are getting, right? Um, I don't want to talk about the uh, credits now, but let's jump back to my demo. Right, so I got the solution. So for the end user, I got the agent, right? So my agent is called Smart Engineering Agent. And this agent is actually like really clever and you can you can apply your technique uh, to make it as a model driven, in, like uh, inbuilt model driven uh, agent or maybe like you can build your own agent and apply these concepts, right? So there is no limitations. Again, sky is the only limitation. So the, the place where you can, you know, innovate through the low code, no code area is the Power Platform and Copilot Studio, right? And uh, so this is my agent and this agent is deployed to SharePoint channel as well as uh, Teams and Microsoft 365 Copilot various places, right? So I'm going to show you one of the cool example here. Um, so let's say let's, you can start. So this is deployed in Teams. So assuming the engineer is actually um, interacting from the Teams interface. You can also do that via SharePoint as well as, uh, you know, like from 365 Copilot, multiple places. So you can see uh, like currently uh, um, when you greet the agent, you can also, you know, like uh, get the smart replies. I think, uh, I don't know, I think there is a, some technical bug, but we can do that manually. Like uh, I wanted to do extract permit, permit details.
yeah and then so now it is asking me to you know upload the file so here i'm going to select one single file which is my permit file and i'm going to drag and drop or maybe you can pick from here so let me drag and drop the file so this is one of the sample and when you hit send so what is going to happen so let me jump back while it is processing so you can see i got an a model and this model is really clever let me open this while it is loading we can also see uh, okay i think there's some technical bug again but you got the idea so it is now working on that uh, you know the particular model and then and then extracted all the json details here but if i switch over to my agent if i do the same processing you get like a kind of uh, you know adaptive car which is nicely designed to inform the user this has been updated and also it will go to the database as well right so that's the idea and uh, let me show you one quick thing while it is loading let's do the retry yeah so you can see here the response is a little bit different and uh, now it is coming in the form of you know like a record updated so basically behind the scene i'm going to show you where it is updating all those records and you can also see a nice adaptive card along with the json so you can either use a json or maybe a text format to get uh, and you know format or cosmetic uh, do the cosmetic changes and uh, let me show you the model so this model is the key thing to understand in this exercise right one of the key thing is uh, what i'm going to do here is instead of doing the pre-build training model which is the forms document processing i have used the gpt prompt where i'm using like hey i wanted to extract there is a file so you can go here and then uh, add your file as an input and then all i'm saying is i wanted to get the permit number and then who is the permit who is the applicant and also like uh, you can also see i want all this axle type and here is the clue so again sky is the only limitation so the thing which you can do here is imagine if your pdf is if your input file is you know like totally clunky and you are expecting some weird characters you can also mask that by providing the proper prompt so don't include the star and avoid space in the column name right so these are the things which you can apply while you know like creating a creating a prompt and then a uh, key thing to note here which is the gpt 4.1 you can also try it with mini which can also work and uh, also your own model like from uh, sure in case if it is required for this task i think uh, i was satisfied with 4.1 because the mini was not responding with some of the um some of the minor things but i think 4.1 is really a good quality and uh, i was expecting the complete accuracy here so if i jump back here so the other thing i wanted to show here um so this is the you know like a working file where everyone is collaborating through sharepoint and you got this document library right so imagine i got like a like a five or you know 10 files at the same time for one specific project you can drag and drop here so this is where the agent will become totally autonomous right so behind the scene either your agent can actually make this happen through the autonomous thing like uh, you can say when a file is uploaded at some point you can automatically kick off this flow and then update this database automatically so here you can see one of the cool example so i uploaded uh, almost like a five or six files and then when i do a refresh you can also see status which is which will kick off in a few minutes probably just give one more minute and then we can see quickly what other things we can do yeah so you can see all this bulk files which is processing at the same time you can see the activities um activity here what it is actually doing sometimes it is there is a small bug but you got the idea so how it is actually processing 
let me go back here and then if you do a well, without doing the refresh you can see everything is extracted so where is the data right so we got this model driven app which is the dataverse if you do so currently you can see uh, it is a empty um, we can say empty app with without any data so if you hit the refresh you can see all those data which has been uh, the dynamic column structured data which has been translated by the prompt model and then came through here so you can see 35 so you can do you can apply your techniques like group by and then make a decision based on the you know the permit number so which is the key thing and then we can say which axle is really good and uh, we can make a decision based on you know like uh, the data which has been coming through from the agent so um, yeah so that's all i wanted to say um there are other things which i would like to share which is like about the licensing but i will hand over to eliza for this yeah thanks raghavan that was really cool to see i liked how you showed both scenarios of being able to handle one document versus multiple documents at the same time with an agent in copilot studio but uh yeah let's have a chat about the ai builder uh model like do do users need to have credits at their company in order to use the ai builder model yeah yes yes eliza i think uh, it's a great question the answer is yes there are various ways you can utilize the AI builder credits again it is not applicable for the end user so it is applicable for the organization or for the environment right so if you got a power apps premium there are associated AI builder credits which is you know like with that type of license which you actually own so you got that for your account or maybe people who is processing on top of that if you are actually planning for all the end users so there is something called the a builder capacity add-ons right so you can purchase it for the company and um, there are like a tier one tier two tier three licensing available so you can use that and that doesn't need a user-based license it is applicable for the complete company right so the civil engineers can just interact with the agent and then get the output so that's that's one of the thing yeah great okay well we can provide a link to information about AI builder credits and capacity in the video description below for our viewers. But uh, yeah, thanks so much, Raghavan, for joining us today in the Low Code Revolution show. I hope you all enjoyed this episode and we shall see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you, Lisa.